Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Kubo and the Two Strings is a strikingly beautiful, dazzling, and exceptionally moving work of cinema that delights the eye and tantalizes the imagination. Leica Animation, the stop-motion animation studio that gave us Coraline, Paranorman, and the Box Trolls, all of which were varying levels of great, have delivered a stunning masterpiece to close out the summer movie season with grace and majesty. Boy, I just love this one. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. If you must blink, do it now. Pay careful attention to everything you see. No matter how unusual it may seem, if you look away, even for an instant, then our hero will surely perish. Those are the opening words of Kubo and the Two Strings, and they are truly a promise. You will not want to miss a second of this movie's stunning visual style. From the very first, I was swept up in the setup of the story, which contained a sort of fairy tale mythology that was completely fresh and exciting before settling into a fairly common quest story in its middle section. This film tells the story of Kubo, a one-eyed boy with magical powers who lives in a small village in ancient Japan. And by magical powers, I mean he plays his magical guitar and can then manipulate paper the way Magneto can manipulate metal. He uses his powers for good, at least for the entertainment of the villagers, but he lives under the protection of a very specific set of rules given to him by his blind and ailing mother. On a side note, there is an awful lot going on with eyes in this movie, and indeed with the Leica Studio films in general. If you'll recall the importance of eyes in Coraline as well, but I digress. It seems that Kubo is being hidden from his vengeful and very magically powerful family members who killed his father, a powerful samurai warrior, blinded his mother, and took Kubo's eye. Now, these rules, one of which is to never be out after dark, protect Kubo from being found by these creepy witch aunties. Kubo. And especially his grandfather, the Moon King, who wants to come and take the one eye that Kubo has left. Of course, those rules have to be broken eventually, and in the prevailing attack, Kubo's mother sacrifices herself to save him. Now, in the company of a talking monkey, played by Charlize Theron, and eventually a giant humanoid beetle warrior, played with wit and bravado by Matthew McConaughey, of all people, Kubo must find three artifacts, a sort of deathly hallows, if you will, and face off with his killer grandfather to get vengeance for the deaths of his parents. Woo! Now, right away, you can probably tell that this story may not be suitable for the smallest of children, despite the fact that it's animated like a love scaring the crap out of your little ones, I'll tell ya. But like Coraline and Paranorman before it, the ones who can handle a little bit of fright, say your seven to eight year olds and older, will find plenty here to tickle their imaginations, from a boat made entirely of leaves to some creepy gigantic eyes that live deep underwater and attempt to hypnotize you into drowning. I love the dynamic between the beetle and monkey characters, and Theron does especially well with the thankless role of straight man to McConaughey's bumbling beetle. Got my attention. I promise I won't even blink. I actually don't think I even can blink. Do I have eyelids? I especially admired the continued inventiveness of the story, which kept revealing new layers to the characters and wraps up in a third act that, like the origami pieces that populate the story, becomes something intricate and delicate, but very beautiful in its simplicity. I also like the thrilling adventure score, and for some reason, you'll find this in all the marketing materials as well, they decide to incorporate the Beatles classic, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, throughout the story and in the end credits, in a great version performed by Regina Spector. Kubo and the Two Strings is really a perfect cinematic experience with visual delights, thrilling dangers, ancient themes, poignant drama, and technical 3D wizardry. Suffice it to say, I award it the full extra large bag of popcorn, and I suggest you rush out right away this very second and go see it in 3D on the biggest screen you can find. But I'm willing to even go so far as to say that this is the best of Leica Entertainment's films so far, and with all apologies to a certain blue tang fish and a rabbit police officer, Kubo and the Two Strings is the best animated film of 2016 as well. Yeah, I went there. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. Click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Kubo and the Two Strings in the comments as well. What do you think was the best animated film this year so far? Let's talk about it. I want to thank you for joining me throughout this roller coaster of a summer movie season, and I hope you'll subscribe and stick with us in the fall. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and if you must blink, do it now.